everyone. Hope everyone's having a great Wednesday so far. Uh, my name is Sarah Fairclough and I'm the business administrator for our platform solutions team. Uh, today, Greg is going to be talking to you about uh, consumer and provider relationships. Just before we get into the webinar, uh, please feel free to post questions throughout. We're happy to hear them. We just won't be answering them until after the presentation. And now I'm going to pass it over to Greg. Thanks, Sarah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, delighted to be here with you all for the next half hour. And today we're going to be talking about consumer provider relationships um, and what they mean within Smart Simple. Um, my name is Greg Stanley, and I am a platform solutions manager uh, as part of the um, platform solutions team. And uh, some of you may know me from previous webinars, um, or we may have talked in the past, or we may be talking in the future. Uh, so what do I uh, mean by uh, consumer provider relationships um, and what kind of benefits do they bring? So within Smart Simple, uh, you can have many different uh, universal tracking applications or UTAs. Uh, typical examples of these are your program manager, uh, your budget manager, your application manager, your meeting manager, et cetera, et cetera. And we use uh, what we call the consumer provider relationship uh, to communicate between those applications. Um, so for passing rules and data between those different UTAs and including them in validations and calculations and that sort of thing. Uh, in each relationship, um, one UTA will act as the, the provider providing the rules and the other one will act as the consumer well, consuming the rules. So what kind of problems does it solve? Um, you know, it stops applications from being submitted late uh, because we can define um, start and end dates on a program call and apply all of those dates to the call and all of the applications that are being uh, submitted as part of that call. It stops uh, funds being overdrawn um, because we can link all of the individual payment records um, from an application back to a budget manager. It eases kind of communication from a meetings perspective. Um, you know, we can do things like generate uh, very, very simple board books or aggregated board books that pulls um, consolidated PDFs of every application into a meeting record that can then be distributed in advance of board meetings. Uh, and as I said, it's, it's that relationship, that provider-consumer uh, relationship um, is how we do that. Just a simple example here of what I mean. So if we take uh, a program call, for example, one program call can be associated with many different applications. Um, and all of the same rules from that particular call can be applied to the applications being submitted. Um, each program, because typically it's configured as a level one record, can have multiple calls. So you can have a quarterly call, um, an open call, you know, multiple calls a year as you need, and you can define separate rules for each program and again for each separate call. Maybe you have a maximum um, request amount, maybe you have a total program budget for, the, for that particular call. Those are kind of things that we can enforce with the consumer provider relationship. Um, here we have the application acting as a consumer. Um, so again, it's consuming information. So one application can pull consume uh, rules and data from multiple different UTAs. So we can associate uh, meetings or panels, budgets or funds, and again, programs and calls back down to the application. So we can share again the information back and forth in multiple different ways. For most of you, um, the relationship will already be pre-configured as part of the implementation. Uh, so examples, like the, the most common example, again, the program manager and the application manager, those are typically configured as part of uh, an early implementation. But say you want to add in an event manager, maybe uh, you want to add in a meeting manager, or you want to configure a, a budget manager yourselves. Um, how would you go around, how would you go about that? Um, and we'll show, you know, I'll show you a very quick example um, in the demo, but in summary, one UTA needs to be a, a provider, Another UTA needs to be consumer. And you can have um, the same UTA can act as both a provider and a consumer in, in different scenarios. So we can talk about that as well. Then you need to configure the provider connection settings. So you define whether or not it's a level one to level one relationship, a level two to level two relationship. Maybe it's a type specific. Uh, maybe it's 
you know, one specific program is related with one specific application type or one specific call type or one specific fund type is related to one specific application type. Then we also could configure the consumer role. And this um, is really an administrative piece. Uh, the role um, is really the method for actually associating the two together. Um, it really just says that this UTA is linked to this UTA in this specific manner. And then we need to configure the consumer list view so that records actually display um, within uh, the uh, consumer uh, UTA records, uh, applications, for example. And then finally, we enable the consumer provider standard fields in each UTA. Um, so again, that they can be accessed uh, from the appropriate records. So uh, to demonstrate this, um, we're going to have a look at uh, our engage uh, configuration. And we're going to have a look at maybe something that uh, isn't uh, usually configured in uh, systems from start or may not have been configured um, in systems from the start. And maybe we'll look at the uh, fund manager here. Um, so this is a, a, the fund manager is used for tracking uh, funds and budgets. Um, so it's always linked to uh, application uh, level two payments or application, sorry, application linked to the applications. It can be either level one or level two as needs be. So to configure it as a provider, we go into the connectivity tab. And all we do is we simply toggle on uh, the connection as a provider. We can, as I said, also enable it as a consumer um, so that it can, uh, you know, hold information in, in a different way. And uh, maybe you want to link it to a program manager um, so that you can associate the information in, in multi directions. But what we do here uh, with the budget manager, um, it's a typical level one, level two, level three configuration. So level one, we have uh, the top level budget. The next level down, we would have the different funds. And then the level three, we have uh, adjustments. Um, so those could be positive or negative. So for this relationship, we would configure a level two relationship. And all we do is we specify the consumer application. So in this case, we're configuring the request manager. The consumer level is going to be level one. Although it's a level two fund, the consuming level is going to be the actual application record. We're going to select that it's available to all templates. So that's every single application type. You could uh, you know, create different um, uh, spe specific connections here. So we could say the request manager level one, but maybe for uh, we only want it to apply to company sponsored or foundation grant making in a certain status. You know, Maybe our fund has to be active so that you can't associate draft or inactive funds um, with applications. And then the last item here is the ID field. Um, and this is simply, again, just for referencing purposes, we typically just leave it as the name standard field. So that's the step one. That's configuring um, the provider UTA. The next step is to go to your consumer UTA. In this case, it's going to be our grants manager or our uh, request manager. And you can see here we have it enabled as both a provider and also as a consumer. Uh, so all we do here is we create a new connection role. So here we have a specific role for each different uh, UTA that we are consuming from. So we have our fund role, our program, our meeting, our grant goal, and our pledge. Um, and if we go into the fund here, we'll see that the fund role is restricted to the fund manager, which means that you can't accidentally associate a program manager with the fund role or the meeting manager with the fund role. Again, purely for administrative purposes, really, um, to control and make that as, as, uh, as, as clear to when you're associating these records with each other. Um, then we would need to create the consumer list view. So again, we're going to go back to our uh, request manager. We're going to go to our connectivity here. We're going to uh, select our uh, fund manager, and we're going to select the fund list view. And you'll see we already have a default one configured. And here we just add in any columns that we want to see uh, for this particular UTA. So the fund name, the year, adjusted, paid, and remaining amounts, and also the status of that particular fund. And then the last step is, uh, again, in both the request manager and the fund manager, we need to enable the UTA um, consumer provider standard fields. Uh, so we have here, you know, we have our level two providers. So our calls, our meeting reviews, our panel reviews, and our funds. And then we also have the level one providers, which are level one to level one, 
these are level two to level one. Um, so we have our meeting and our goals uh, configured here. And to turn these on, you know, if they're not enabled like the UTA consumers aren't, all we do is, uh, you know, uh, go into the edit mode on the field, modify the caption and click save, and it'll then be available on the application. So how do these actually work? You know, how do we go about associating records uh, from different UTAs with each other? It's very, very simple. So we have, uh, you know, our activities, our standard fields here uh, with our activities. And then from here down, uh, these are all of our um, provider UTAs. So we have provider level one, provider level one, and then we have provider level two, uh, level two, level two, and level two. So typically when you are configuring the relationship between the program call and the application, the program will automatically be assigned via a consumer creation button. And that an example of that would be your apply now button on your list view on your applicant portal. But we can change these and we can add in additional, well, bad example, adding in additional calls, we wouldn't do that. But if we take the fund manager, for example, here we have two different funds associated with the application that we can draw down from. Maybe we want to add in a few more. Okay, so we'll take our some of our 2020 funds. We just select the role again. All, this is purely for administrating and to, 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 find, to divide, define that relationship. Um, so we're going to use the uh, fund role. We don't have any other options because we limited to the correct um, relationship. And then we're just going to add the records. And what this means then when the page reloads is we now have four budgets uh, that we can associate and allocate payments to. Um, and although this isn't a budget manager demo, uh, when we are making, so we have our three payment records already created, uh, we can now create different allocations or different disbursements from different budgets um, as needs be. And by doing this, by splitting out the different budgets, we can handle things like cost sharing, um, we can stop budgets being overdrawn, um, and it just makes your entire grant making process a little, bit, um, a little bit easier because you have all of the information related to those grants in one specific uh, area. Everything is related back to each other. If we go, for example, to one of the funds, uh, we take one that has some records here, we can see the allocated grants. So we can see, okay, uh, we had our opening balance, we have an amount committed and we have a remaining amount and the percentage of the fund used, but we can actually see which grants have been allocated um, against this particular fund area. And likewise, if we go to the program manager and we go into the calls, we can again see uh, you know, all of the applications that have been submitted uh, or started um, relating to this particular call. And again, you know, your call can be as simple as needs be. Um, it may just be a start and an end date. In this case, you know, we have a fairly complex configuration. Uh, we have our years, we have our budget total. So maybe you have rules enforced that the total awards, uh, maybe an individual award can be a hundred grand, but maybe you have the full pot, um, can't exceed a million dollars. We define individual call codes. Uh, eligibility questionnaires, we can include different deadlines, documents, um, and even define custom eligibility questions as well if needs be. And finally, uh, you know, some uh, custom uh, submitted uh, or email communication. Um, rather than the default one that gets triggered by the workflow, you can specify custom language in here um, to send this information as well. And, you know, one last thing before we open up to questions, another example um, of a, a consumer provider uh, relationship uh, would be, um, you know, goals tracking. So in this particular instance, we are uh, tracking all of the applications, the donations, uh, volunteering against the UN um, development goals. So we can associate goals with programs, we can associate pro budgets with goals or budget with programs, and then we can associate those goals with applications, donations, volunteering events. And we can have all of that information roll up to the goal so we can define and you know, report on, these, uh, on our you know, impact towards those individual goals across different uh, UTA areas. So here again, you know, target remaining. Uh, the volunteer value pulls from the volunteer manager UTA. The grant manager pulls from the grant manager or request manager UTA, and the donation value um, pulls in from the donation manager UTA. And all of those uh, different UTAs um, speaking with each other 
and sharing information across the board. Uh, so that's it from me, folks. Happy to take any questions. It's quite a, it's um, a little bit of a, a tricky concept, um, but it's a very, very useful one. And as I said, it's something that's usually configured out of the box for you when your uh, project goes live. Um, but if you did want to configure, you know, a simple goals manager, um, this is a, a very simple UTA. Um, you know, we have some uh, expectations of goals and, um, you know, our targets. And they just roll up from the different UTAs. And again, we can see the grants, the campaigns, the donations um, that have been contributing towards those uh, particular goals being met. And this is a very, very simple UTA. You know, maybe you want to configure a simple meeting manager, again, with a start and end date and some contacts. That's up to you. But to share that information across, um, it's the consumer and, relate, uh, consumer and provider relationship that you use. Great. Thanks, Greg. That was awesome. If anyone does have any questions that they think of like after the webinar, you're definitely welcome to email us at business solutions at smartsimple.com. We're happy to answer your questions offline, like Greg said, um, or like if you think of anything afterwards, we're happy to take a call and discuss further. Yeah, we hope you have a great day and thank you so much for attending. Thanks everybody, all the best.